Yes, in before session we tried to demonstrate what are the different domains in a uh, core field which is related to electronics carrier. So now I am I'm more digging into this embedded uh, domain. So based on the classification of hardware and software, uh, we, are separate, we are separating your electronic systems. So from hardware point of view, you need to more focus on the programmable devices and programming languages so that you can separate your carriers. So from embedded point of view, you need to focus on programmable devices like process and controllers. And as programming languages, the most core programming languages for embedded domain, which is C and C++ and embedded C. So these are the words you may heard in this domain as programming languages. So once you start using these two combinations, so if you design any electronic system, so you can make it as or you can name it as the category of embedded system. So this is the one brief information I want to clarify. So whenever you want to go with a specific domain, so in electronics, so for embedded system, these two are the classifications about programmable devices and programming languages. So now I just want to go for the more in depth about these processors and controllers within these sessions and you should learn the C, C++ or Python programming languages. So if you want to enhance your career in embedded domain, uh, concentrate on process advancements towards 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit and programming languages C, you should more focus on C in depth and system programming. So these are all the advanced topics you need to learn to enter into this field. So the processor, what way your processor and what it, how it works in a system and what is the responsibility of your processor in a system whenever you are designing your own electronic system. So for that, you should understand uh, the basic history of processors I want to clarify you. So as a processor, a general system, so everyone is using this process as a programmable device. So the actual behavior of processor is very simple, which is allowing binary inputs and provides binary outputs. But which is not providing your binary outputs directly, whenever you are giving binary inputs, it needs proper commands so that it will take proper action on your input data and it provides your binary outputs. So again, these commands which will follow a specific language. So in academic, from a BTEC point of view or any other uh, basic academic sessions, you may find the programming language assembly for microprocessors. These are move, add, so, so and so instructions. So now the behavior of processor is very clear. It allows binary inputs and provides binary outputs. So whenever you are providing suitable instructions to the device. So this is a simple behavior, but the application developer is expecting whenever I'm connecting sensor. So expected thing is I just want to pass my input through sensor and looking to control my motor or something. So you may choose any one of the input or any one of the output for your system or product. Now you are providing the input data from sensor and expecting motor control from this programmable device. But this device is not able to take the input sensor, take the data from sensor directly and it is not able to control your motor directly. So it uses some different devices in between sensor and in between motor. So you may find BPIs in between sense motor and processor and again in between sensor and processor also you may require PPIs. So what is the importance of these PPIs? So PPI full form is very clear which is programmable peripheral interface. So this PPI which will help you to connect your input devices and output devices because your PPA name itself programmable peripheral interface which will support input output ports for us. So this input output ports 
which are allowing to connect your input devices as well as output devices. So that your processor is not able to allowing your inputs and output devices directly, compulsory you need to use this PPI. So this PPI will convert your input data into zeros and ones and based on your instruction, whatever the action you are expecting on this sensor data. So again it is going to provide in binary format which is zeros and ones. So this PPI will take care of your controlling your output device. So this is a simple scenario you may find whenever you are doing application with processor based systems. So this is a simple scenario. Now who introduced these processors first? So processors are introduced by Intel Corporation in 1972. The first processor from Intel which 4 bit. So see that they are always measuring the processor's capacities in bit format because your processors are allowing always your data in binaries which are zeros and ones. So that your capacity of processor measured with bit, maybe 4 bit processor, 8 bit processor, 16 bit processor, 32 bit processor, 64 bit processor. These are the different categories which are present in market about these devices. Intel Corporation introduced the first microprocessor which is 4 bit capacity with a series of 4001. And later they introduced 8 bit which is 8085 which are studied in academic, I think so. And there are 16 bit processors which are 8018626 family. And 32 bit category which are Pentium version processors. Pentium 1, 2, 3, 4. These are the next series of processors. And 64, the present running processors which are I series. See, your processor generations came from a previous only which is not coming directly okay the first microprocessor from intel corporation which is 4 bit so these people are the leaders for processors even if you buy any system which is advanced stage any system with a processors the company from intel okay so this this is a simple design of electronic system by using processor which means it is very clear whenever you want to do application with the processor you need to depend on this external devices compulsory related to input output devices you need to PPI and for command storage so this command storage you need memory compulsory so this memory which allows to store your programs or data whatever you want so this is a simple outlook of electronic system design using processor. But Intel thought that to design any system or to develop any product, there are three important points you need to focus, which is cost of the system and size of the system and power consumption of the system. So based on these three elements, again the Intel corporation moved to the another programmable devices just by integrating all these things on a single chip. So these are the major considerations about the application development. First one is cost and size and power consumption. What way you are going to reduce your cost? So I'm just by removing all these external things which are added with the processor, I need to buy all the individual devices from the market. And whenever you are arranging all these components in a circuit, anyway the size will be more. And if you are giving power supply to individual devices, some devices may work with 5, 5 volts operating voltage, some devices need 3.3 volt. Means depends on their individual operating voltages, you need to provide the proper power. So that to reduce all these complications with the processor based systems, the Intel thought that by integrating all these things, by embedded by embedding all individual components in a single chip, they introduced one more programmable device and they named as microcontroller. So what you are expecting from microcontroller? So whatever your general requirements, every system will need mandatory requirements. Every product which will require some memory to store the program, some I.O. ports to connect my inputs and outputs, so just by integrating this processor in a same device and by providing certain amount of memory, again memories are different types, permanent memory, temporary memory. So
so volatile, non-volatile. Again, there are so many classifications in the memories, but every microcontroller will come up with standard memory, which will help you to store the application program or data. And the controllers which are providing for us, IO ports. To connect your sensors, to connect your displays, to connect your motors, whatever you want, you need some IO ports help. So along with this, they are providing some other features also, even from basic microcontrollers onwards. But these microcontrollers are introduced in 1980s, again by the same Intel Corporation. But you may have different company names in microcontroller categories, which are Atmel, Philips, Motorola, Samsung. There are many microcontroller companies which are present now. They got the license from Intel and they started designing their own microcontrollers by following some standards. So standards means every microcontroller come up with some standard features. Without these standard features, there is no microcontroller in market. So who made these standards? Intel. So these standards you need to follow whenever you are looking to design a microcontroller. The standard features are memories, IO ports and some basic features they, they implemented which are timers, counters, interrupts and one protocol. So just by adding these extended features, each microcontroller or each manufacturer has its own uh, style of designing controllers. You may not find the common features for all microcontrollers from all companies. So if you are working with Philips, Philips microcontroller or if you are working with Motorola microcontroller, you may find some differences with respect to features, whatever they are providing. You can find out these differences in block diagram. So every microcontroller manufacturer has its own set of blocks and as a learner, you need to focus on those blocks and this block is help you to implement your application. So every block has its own importance. Suppose you are taking IO ports. It helps to you connect peripherals. And if you are dealing with ADC, it deals with analog sensors. So suppose if your application contains some analog sensors, then you need to use ADC block. And if you are expecting any time delay operations, then you have to approach timers from the microcontrollers. So this is a simple scenario you may find for processor based system and controller based system. So now for controllers, I, I can directly connect my input, maybe sensor or maybe switch or maybe keypad or maybe switch, anything you can connect, your microcontrollers are allowing to connect any display directly. So why, which is supporting to connect your inputs outputs directly here and here, which is not possible because your processor not supporting IO ports. So these are the differences you may study in academic, the differences between microprocessor and microcontroller. So based on this, just based on this image or diagram, you can differentiate. This will support on-chip memory, no, no memory, less complexity, more complexity, less power consumption, more power consumption, and even designing cost will be less and cost will be more. So like this, based on these things, you can differentiate your processor and controller. So this is what you are writing differences, processor versus controllers. Okay. So now, but there are different generations of controllers again from microcontrollers. There is a first microcontroller here, which is 8-bit, 80 series, 8031, 8051, which is you are studying in academic still. And there are 16-bit controllers in market from the most popular manufacturer who is PIC microcontroller from microchip, PIC 24 series and the other generation is 32 bit which are more popular in market towards LPC and STM32. These are the different categories or different companies of 32 bit microcontrollers. So this is how you can find out the generations of processors and generations of controllers and what way your system is deferred with processor and controller and most of the applications in firmware development especially they are going to prefer controllers rather than processors because of on-chip memory on-chip IO ports and some extended features like the protocol support UART, I2C, SPA, CAN, USB, Ethernet these features are extending day to day 
in advanced microcontrollers so this is a simple scenario of between processor and controller and tomorrow we are continuing the block diagram of microcontroller thank you